Mrs. Rajavi, my brothers and sisters here with me in Paris, my brothers and sisters at Ashraf and Liberty, it is with great sympathy and regrets that we meet here today. 2013 massacre of innocent people, 2011 massacre of innocent people, 2009 and the residents who also died through denial of medical services and through the harassment of Iraqi forces. This must stop, and it must stop immediately. I agree with my good friend, Dave Phillips. What does Kobla have to hide? If Kobla is too much of a coward to go into Camp Liberty after an attack, then I should never have received this email from the United Nations about 10 days ago telling me I was denied of being willing to be the security officer for Camp Liberty. Last spring, our good friend Ali Savavi came to me and he said, would you put in for this position? And I agreed not because I was anxious to go back to Iraq, but I very much was anxious to go back to be with the people at Liberty and Ashraf. Often I am asked why I put in so much time and effort. It's not about me. It's about the MEK. It's about the people at Ashraf and Liberty. They did everything they could to keep the soldiers and Marines of my command alive to include putting themselves at risk. At a cost of 4,485 American dead, 31,000 wounded in action, $805 billion spent, and over 103,000 innocent Iraqis killed in war-related violence, all we have accomplished is to replace Saddam Hussein with someone much more conniving, someone much more brutal, someone much more self-serving. Also, working with Iranian families throughout Western Europe, Canada, and North America, I have seen very outstanding people. I've seen very outstanding young people. And every time I look at them, I think what greatness we could achieve throughout the world if the government of Iran was allowed to have democracy and freedom and raise their children the same as we see in Western Europe and North America. Mrs. Rajavi, I'm in this fight with you for the very long duration. Also, we understand the truth about the MEK, and we can recognize the lies when they're said, and they just never seem to stop. But as my friend Dave Phillips said, we gave a promise. We gave a promise to every one of these people that we would stand behind them, that we would protect them. As you've heard me say before, no one despises war more than the warrior. No one despises the breaking of a ceasefire agreement or a surrender of arms agreement than the warrior who helped secure it and the warrior who helped work it. And that is exactly what has been allowed to happen. It's despicable. A week ago, you heard me say something, and I'll say it again. The only time you'll hear me compliment Al Maliki. He has got to be the world's greatest ventriloquist, because every time Kobla opens his mouth, Maliki's words comes out. Maliki needs to stop being, excuse me, Kobla needs to stop being Maliki's minister of international propaganda and get back to the role of being the ambassador to the United Nations first. Please allow me also to speak, not only as a former camp commander of Ashraf, but as the first anti-terrorism officer for all coalition forces in Iraq. This rocket attack was a professional military operation. It could not have been done by a militia or a rogue element. To land scores of rockets in such a small location requires reconnaissance, ground surveys, and a lot of practice. This was a codes force operation working with the Maliki government. Iraqi Hezbollah stepped forward to take credit 
No, what they're doing is trying to take the blame off Nuri El Maliki for allowing it to happen. This attack had to come from multiple vehicle platforms. Now we have Kobla asking Maliki to investigate the event. That equates to asking Adolf Hitler to investigate the Holocaust. On the 24th of January this year, the United Nations announced a special investigation into civilian deaths from United States drone missions. If the UN has the resources to invest in American drones, then the United Nations has the resources to invest, investigate against this attack that occurred this past weekend. And while they're at it, go back to 2009 and 2011 attacks on Camp Ashraf. This is exactly why Herr Kobla does not want me on the ground at Liberty. Unlike Kobla, I'm not afraid to go into a field of fire, as our brothers and sisters at Ashraf and Liberty will tell you. I'm also not afraid to put my boots into the mud and the raw sewage that, is, that, that has been allowed to spill out of those tanks. Unlike Herr Kobla, I do not require a security detail to go with me to either Camp Liberty or Camp Ashraf because I know when I am among the MEK, I am far more secure than Herr Kobler is among his United Nations security detail. The United Nations needs to work hard to bring all the residents back to Ashraf as we work hard to move the residents out. And the residents need to be put under United Nations security control. I will say this right now, the United Nations needs to do better on that mission than they did with their security details in the Congo. Despite the promises of Herr Kobla, this temporary transit location, once promised to meet humanitarian standards, has failed. Of all people, Herr Kobla should know, you do not achieve peace in our time by yielding to a dictator. He knows the horrors of Dachau, of Bergen-Belsen, and Auschwitz. And unfortunately, he has allowed Camp Liberty to become not only a concentration camp, but an extermination camp. In the future, when atrocities are committed at Ashraf in Liberty, Herr Kobler needs to stop protecting Maliki. Furthermore, Herr Kobler has no right in the future to say, I did not know, because Herr Kobler has had all the opportunity to know, and instead he has hidden the truth from the world. It is the truth that Herr Kobler hides from the United Nations and the world. It is time for him to return home and Herr Kobler to retire. He has been offered the chance to follow the legacy of Conrad Adenauer and stand up to tyranny. And yet, Herr Kobler has done just the opposite. 2,000 Liberty residents have completed the UNHCR process. It is time to get them out of Liberty and let them enjoy the freedom of the West and let the MEK get on with bringing democracy to Iran. The Secretary of State, John Kerry, we appreciate his responding to Governor Rendell's call to follow up on the rocket attack. You had very good friends in America. Within minutes of receiving notice, P.J. Crawley was on the phone to his embassy people getting them involved. Governor Rendell personally called the Secretary of State, and Senator Torricelli called an ambassador friend of his. And this was within, sometimes within minutes and sometimes the very next morning. You had fast response. You had very, very good friends in the United States fighting for you. I say this to my friends, my brothers and sisters at Liberty and Ashraf. And to Secretary John Kerry, we asked more. As a combat veteran, 
you know the honor of surrender agreements and ceasefire agreements. Grab your new position by the reins and return the State Department to enforcing those written agreements that we made with the residents of Ashraf and Liberty. To all leaders of Europe, United States, and Canada, we look to you to help bring the residents out of Ashraf and out of Liberty. They want to come home. They want to come to the West. It's time to do it. All of us in this room together and to the residents at Liberty watching this through direct link. You are with us in heart and you are with us in spirit. Now, taking this opportunity for every resident, I would like to share these words. It's the words of Moses when he was working to free his brothers and sisters from tyranny and oppression. Those words apply very much today. Let my people go. Thank you.